In this episode of The Cocoa Collector, I pull the curtain back on a unique, one-of-a-kind piece of cocoa history. The Tandy Color Computer 4 case mock-up. Time to time, photos of this case appear online along with questions and comments about its history and its design. In this video, I answer these questions and more. I'll go over the artifact from all angles, discuss its provenance, and explore the lore, stories, and intrigues surrounding it. But before we get into that, I want to touch on the history of the idea around the Coco 4. Tandy introduced the Color Computer 3, or Coco 3 as it's colloquially known, in 1986. It's featured here in the 1987 Radio Shack catalog. Tandy discontinued the machine in 1990, making it the last official release in the color computer line. By then, it was clear that Tandy had no plans to release the Coco 4. Despite corporate decisions, the Coco community pined for a successor, and thus began a race to create a community-based answer. Several years of hobbyist efforts culminated into hardware offerings. By the end of 1991, three machines were touted as available for sale. Delmar's 68,000-based System 4 graced the coveted front cover of the September 1991 issue of the Rainbow Magazine. Two months later, Frank Hogg's TC70 took the spot, followed by Interactive Media Systems MM1 on the cover of the December 1991 issue. While none of these machines carried the moniker Coco 4, they were seen by the Coco community in competition for the title, if not in name, in spirit. But there was some resistance to this idea in high places. In the May 1992 issue of the Rainbow Magazine, Lonnie Falk penned a controversial editorial in his print pound minus two column titled, The Coco Carries On. In that editorial, Lonnie shares his conclusion that the current slate of 68K based computers all vying to be the next Color Computer 4, weren't worthy of the title, stating that, quote, there is no Color Computer 4 and there never will be, end quote. Although Lonnie took a lot of flack for that statement, I think time has proven him right. Like Lonnie, I believe the Coco 4 is an unattainable feat. It's a mantle that only Tandy could put into place. Even with all of the upgrades available for the Coco 3 in the community today, the best we can hope for is a Coco 3 Plus. Let's fast forward to 2012. While performing research on Coco, the colorful history of Tandy's underdog computer, I contacted John Prickett, who was the hardware engineer on the Coco 2 and the Coco 3. We begin exchanging emails. On October 2nd, 2012, John sent me an email with these two photos attached. This was quite a surprise to me. As I'll mention a bit later, I had heard a story about the possible existence of this artifact, but aside from that, there was no other indication in the Coco community that something like this existed. Yet, here it was. John lived near Austin, Texas, which was about a five-hour drive from me. I made the trip in April 2013 to interview him. During that visit, I got to actually view and handle the Coco 4 mock-up case. With that historical commentary out of the way, let's take a closer look at the case. There's been a lot of discussion around the aesthetics of the case, with most of it being negative. Ugly as sin and foobar are just a few of the comments I've seen over the years about the design. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and in my view, this case doesn't warrant the criticism it receives. It's not an ergonomic model to be certain, but I think it fits the style of the era that it was earmarked for. I guarantee that if Tandy actually made and sold a Coco 4 in this case, people would have bought it and loved it. The top of the case juts out prominently from the keyboard. This deviates considerably from the cases of the previous color computers. On the right side of the top housing is an actual mechanical 3.5 inch floppy drive. It adds considerable weight to the case and it's an interesting choice given that the floppy drive system that Radio Shack sold for the Coco 3 was a five and a quarter inch unit. The area on the left seems as though it was made to be removed for some future upgrade, perhaps for another floppy drive or even a hard drive unit. 
The keyboard looks to be an exact replica of the Coco 3 keyboard in layout. The only difference is the bezel is black instead of gray. For a time, Radio Shack sold this exact keyboard in its stores as hobbyist stock. It is believed these keyboards came from the abandoned Deluxe Color Computer Project, and it's likely that this keyboard came from there. The most compelling part of this unit is the badge, Tandy Color Computer 4. It looks nearly identical to the badge found on the Coco 3, with the exception of the tantalizing number 4. This badge is interesting because it's clearly professionally designed and fabricated. It's not a paper-thin concept mock-up. Someone took time to design this badge to look professional and finished, and to place it where it resides. The left side of the case is unremarkable. The right side, however, has a marking in the plastic for what looks like a cartridge slot. This is in the same place as on other color computers. The back plane area has no cutouts for ports, but there is a sticker on the bottom left that has sustained some scratches. I can make out NOV in what I think is an 8 and a 4, or November 1984. This is possibly the month and year that this case was made. This just over a year and a half before the debut of the Color Computer 3 in July of 1986. I'll touch on the significance of this shortly. The bottom of the case has no markings or stickers, but it does have four plastic feet that are similar, if not exact, to the feet on Coco 2s and Coco 3s. There appears to be no screws or other fasteners holding the top of the case to the bottom. The 3.5 inch floppy drive sits loose in the bay, but I have not attempted to remove it. It's not clear what, if anything, resides inside the case itself but there are a couple of unknown items loose and rattling around inside. Now I want to devote some time to talk about the intrigue around this case and how it came to be. As I mentioned, this case was in the hands of John Prickett for years. He indicated to me that Bernard Gray, a design engineer at Tandy, was responsible for creating the case. Searching online, we can find a number of patents assigned to Tandy Corporation, enlisting Bernard A. Gray as the inventor. These patents cover computer, telephone, and printer housings. It's fair to say that Mark Siegel is an authority on the Coco 3 and any consideration of a Coco 4. He worked at Tandy and oversaw the design and creation of the color computers. His fingerprints are on the design of the machines, and his first-hand knowledge should be considered authoritative when it comes to the history of the Coco. Mark insists that Tandy never considered a Coco 4. He claims that the mock-up isn't a concept for a Coco 4, but rather a concept design for the Coco 3 for the educational market. Obviously, this education-focused Coco 3 never came to be, or we would have seen some evidence of it by now. It's a plausible explanation. Recall that the sticker on the back indicates a date of November 1984. This is within the time that the Coco 3 was being designed. If Tandy were considering an education-only version of the machine, the date of November 1984 fits. But why does the metal badge advertise Color Computer 4? It's unlikely that Tandy would use that name for an education-focused version of the Coco 3. There's another story that I can tell firsthand. During my time as a software engineer at Microware in Des Moines, Iowa in the 1990s, I asked several people who were around in the Coco's heyday about the possible existence of a Coco 4. I was told of a trip that a number of Microware employees took down to Fort Worth to convince Tandy to continue using OS 9 on any new color computer successor. During the visit at the Tandy Towers, the Microware folks saw a prototype of a Color Computer 4. Could it be that they saw this very case? Here we have two different stories from two credible sources, both of whom were in the know at the time of the Coco 3's development. I can't reconcile the disparities between these stories, but I have no reason to doubt the authenticity of either. And that's what makes this case even more intriguing. So there you have it. The Coco 4 case mock-up. 
a mysterious piece of color computer history whose full story is still in the dark. <laughs>